In today's Gospel reading, our Lord gives us the Lord's Prayer, but notice how he leads up into it. So the disciples are gathered around our Lord, and then he says, When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Now, somebody might ask the question, well, if God knows what we need even before we ask him, why doesn't he just give it to us? So the answer is that God respects our freedom. He does not force his gifts, his blessings, his benefits upon us. We must seek them from him. The other reason is that God wants us to have a relationship with him. So he wants us to pray to him, even though he knows what we are going to ask for. He wants us to ask. Same as with parents. Parents might know exactly what their children need, but often they will, they will wait for their children to ask for those specific things. So it's, God wants us to have a close relationship with him. Now notice how our Lord says, Do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. So when it comes to prayer, it's not a question of how many prayers we say, but rather how well we pray those prayers. The blessed Thomas of Cory, he has a statement, unless the heart prays, the tongue only plays. Unless the heart prays, the tongue only plays. So we need to pray from the heart. We need to think of the meaning of the words that we are saying. We need to think of who we are addressing when we are praying. Now, the exception to this perhaps would be the rosary, because when we pray the rosary, we're not so much focused on the words that we are saying, especially when it comes to the Hail Marys, but ideally we are focusing on the different mysteries. And this is why it's good before every mystery to add a petition. In other words, we are offering up this decade for a growth in the virtue of faith or, or whatever it may be. And also to meditate even before you begin the decade, because some people have a hard time meditating. So the, the Hail Marys are kind of like a backdrop, kind of occupying part of our mind in a good way while we try to meditate on the different mysteries. So we do need to pray well. Now, this is not to say that we shouldn't pray much or say many prayers, but rather that when we do, we should pray well. And of course, our Lord gives us the Lord's Prayer, and he kind of summarizes the most essential things that we should be praying for. And too often, we as Catholics, we just rattle off the Our Father uh, without much meaning, not really praying it from the heart, but praying it from memory. So it's good for us to reflect on the words of the Our Father. Saint Andre Bisset, um, the great Canadian saint who was uh, who died in 1937 and, and declared a saint not that long ago. As you know, through his intercession, which he all attributed to St. Joseph, many, many miracles occurred uh, during his lifetime. But he made a comment that he, he was surprised that so many people come to him and they ask for material, worldly things, including health, physical health. But so few people or none at all, ask for spiritual gifts. You know, St. Andre, help me to be truly humble. St. Andre, help me to be more open to the Holy Spirit. St. Andre, help me to be more, more virtuous in, in general or, or to avoid sin or to be the way that God calls me to be. So, so few people ask for these things. And I think it's worthwhile for us to consider what are we usually asking for when we pray? Is it something worldly, something material? It's not to say that we can't or shouldn't ask for these things. But the point is that spiritual things are far more important than the material things of this world, because all the material things are passing. And when we are strong spiritually, it helps us to deal with the worldly challenges that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. So I just wanted to briefly go through the Our Father also, so, um, our Father who art in heaven, so hallowed be thy name. 
what are we really saying? So think about the Our Father. It's not my Father, but it's Our Father. It's a reminder that we are all children of God, that we should love one another, and, and that God is equally a Father to all of us. And hallowed be thy name. So many people have no idea what that means. Some people say, oh, to be holy. Well, no, it's, it's may your name be holy. So if we pray for God's name to be holy, that means we would want everyone to consider God's name to be holy. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So if we're praying for God's kingdom to come, we want his kingdom in our souls, in our hearts. But we also want his kingdom present here on earth. And we want his will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven, which means perfectly. In heaven, his will is accomplished perfectly. So imagine that. We want a perfect world. We want everybody to be perfect Christians. And this is what we should be striving for, to make his kingdom present here by sharing the good news, the message of salvation with everyone around us and obeying his word. So we, to be an example of obedience to his word and encouraging others to obey his word also to obey his commandments, to obey his call for us. Um, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. This passage, this verse is very, very significant. So easy to, to overlook the significance of it. The original Greek for daily, it's, it's a different word that can be a number of different possible meanings and in the English, they've translated as a daily, but one translation is super substantial, uh, unusual, something extraordinary. So theoretically, it could refer to the Eucharist, but it could refer to spiritual bread, being nourished spiritually on a daily basis. So it's acknowledging or the need that we have to be nourished by God on a regular basis basis. But yes, it also includes the fact that we need our daily bread. We need to eat. So most of us here in North America have enough food to eat, but a lot of people in the world are starving. So to be able to have the most essential things for our physical well-being, but also and especially for our spiritual well-being. So give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we, as we forgive those who trespass against us. So acknowledging that we are sinners, acknowledging that we are in need of forgiveness and that we need to be forgiven by God, but also reminding ourselves that the measure we use will be the measure that we get. So forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then it says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And lead us not into temptation. This is where some people are confused. Well, why would God lead us into temptation? God doesn't lead us into temptation, certainly not in the sense of leading us into sin. God does allow us to be tempted for our own good so that we can grow in virtue and in goodness. But when we pray, lead us not into temptation, what we're really saying is don't allow us to give in to temptation. Lead us out of this. So lead us not into temptation, but lead us out of temptation. That's what we're really saying when we pray that. And to deliver us from evil, so the evils that we commit, but also deliver us from the evil one. In other words, Satan, the evil spirits. Deliver us from their influence completely so that we can be free from, from the temptations that they, they afford us. And when we pray this, it, it's kind of important to remind ourselves that if we ourselves put ourselves into an occasion of temptation or an occasion of sin, then we cannot expect God to protect us. So if we acknowledge our sinful inclination, if we acknowledge our weakness, our, in other words, if we are truly humble, then God will give us the grace that we need to overcome any and every temptation. And God does not allow us to be tempted beyond our strength. So God is always there provided we turn to him. And it's important that we do. So he knows all our needs. He knows especially the, our needs when we are being tempted, when we are tried, when we are suffering uh, difficulties, challenges in this world. So let us pray to God with great faith, great conviction to pray from the heart knowing that he is a loving father who will provide us with the strength that we need to face any and all difficulties.